Hello and welcome to the loadout guide. Without any further ado, let's get started. First, let's talk about scopes. Scopes are made of three components. The first part is casing or housing, which is made of plastic or metal, and they shape the scope. The second part is side middle, which is everything inside the casing except the reticle. And the last part is the reticle, which gives you feedback in gunfights. First, we are gonna compare holographic versus reflex versus red dot. Okay, let's talk about casing size. Hollow's casing size is big, especially at the bottom. Red dot has the biggest casing. Reflex casing is smaller than red dot and holographic. In conclusion, as I'm changing between the opacity of the images, you see the holographic casing is bigger than reflex but smaller than red dot. Red dot has the biggest casing. But why does casing size matter? The smaller the casing size, the lesser chance you will miss an enemy. Of course, casing size is not a huge deal, but you should keep that in mind when picking sites. Here's an example. DZ has just got tons of time. Oh, Yardy just dropped. Yard's on oh. the flank, and there's going to be an oh, Ash. He knows watching. he's on the stairs. Oh, but Ash is on he's drone. He's actually going to hit this. Yardy, Ash is on drone. Go. You know Yardy's not Yardy, sitting go. still for long. Yardy, go! You can't be... Yardy sits still. Yardy! Yardy! And he oh. knows now. He knows. Oh, Yardy is trolling. Yardy is trolling. Now let's talk about sight window. Sight window is important to see the enemies and adjust aim. But if you are the type of guy that loses focus when holding angles, maybe a smaller sight window is better for you as there are less things that can distract you. Red dot has the biggest sight window and reflex has the smallest. Now let's talk about reticles. Red dot's reticle is a huge dot in the middle of the site. The dot can cover enemy's head in long range gunfights, which makes it hard to see if you are aiming at the head or not. The reflex reticle is a green triangle in the middle. For some people it can be counterintuitive how the site works, as the bullets land on the top of the triangle, unlike other sites that it lands in the middle. This feature messes up with your crosshair placement, as you need to aim a bit lower than you would with other sites. And the last one is hollow, which is popular among 1x sites. Hollow's reticle is a circle with a dot in the middle. Hollow's dot is smaller than red dots, so it won't conceal the head in long range gunfights. One thing I like about this site, as I said before the dot in the middle is not too big, and the circle around the dot helps you quickly realize where the dot is and where you are aiming in gunfights. If the hollow part of the enemy's head is inside the circle, chances are you are aiming at the head of that set enemy. You need to judge this for yourself, but for me holding pixel angles with hollow is easier than other Vonix sites. Here's the recap of what we talked about. Red dot has the biggest casing, and reflex has the smallest. And red dot has the biggest sight window, and reflex the smallest. For me, the holographic side is better than other Vonix sites. But the side choice is the matter of your opinion. The link to this image in the description. Here's a fun fact, Vortex has smaller casing than normal holographic. But it has bigger casing than reflex, and smaller casing than red dot. Vortex casing is bigger than red dot at the bottom. Now let's talk about ACOG. The most important factor when choosing between 2.5x size like ACOG and 1x size is the range of gunfights, which is determined by the map layout and the site you are attacking or defending. For example, let's say the site is CEO and lounge in the map bank. Most of the gunfights you are going to take on this site are at long range, so bringing ACA is the better choice. But on maps like Oregon and on the site laundry and supply, you are mostly taking medium range gunfights, so it's better to bring 1x sites on that site. Let's talk about 1x size on Russian operators. Regarding casing size, holographic has the biggest and reflex has the smallest casing size. And red dot is the mix between the two. It has big casing at the bottom but small on the sides. Holographic has the biggest sight window and reflex has the smallest. And again, red dot is in the middle. The only reticle I can use on Russian operators is red dot. The reticles on other sides seem too cluttered. I'm gonna let the clip run a bit longer and you can judge it by yourself.
Here is a recap of what I talked about. The image link is in the description. There are 5 attachments in the game, suppressor, flash hider, compensator, muzzle brake, and extended barrel. It's obvious that you should never use no attachments, except some rare cases. Before we talk about muzzle attachments, you need to know some definitions. Smoke tray is a white smoke that shows a bullet's path, and thread indicator shows what direction our enemy is shooting you from. The centering time is how long it takes the gun to return to the original point of the aim after rising during a burst. And for recall diamond, here's its AP, the community manager definition. After each shot, you could superimpose a diamond on that shot, and the next shot will fire and land within that diamond. This allows for progressive recall that isn't a set pattern, making that diamond smaller means small variance between shots. Here's my definition. As you see here, not all my shots land in the same spot. Here's a graph recall pattern of the scorpion. The first shot always lands on the triangle. The second shot could be anywhere around here on the green spread. Here is a better example from P90. The first shot always lands on the triangle. The second shot anywhere that green shows. Third shot for yellow, orange for fourth shot and red for the fifth. This image was from a Rogue 9 video. Link to that video in the description. As you see, no attachment has no effect on your gun, so never use no attachments. Suppressor removes smoke trace and thread indicators, but reduces your gun damage by 15%. The benefits don't outweigh the negatives. Rainbow Six Siege is not a stealth game, so removing smoke trace and thread indicators doesn't help you. Also, suppressor reduces muzzle flash, but muzzle flashes are problematic on night maps. For more detail on this, check Rogue Noise video. Extended barrel increases the damage of the gun by 15 to 20 percent, but only in long range. And by long range, I really mean long range, like plus 20 meters, which is why this muzzle attachment is useless for most gunfights. Muzzle break reduces first shot recoil and centering time by 45 percent. Because for DMRs and pistols, the first shot is always the first shot of the burst. They would benefit a lot from muzzle brake. On DMRs and pistols, only use muzzle brake. Muzzle brake also helps guns that have manageable recoil, except the first shot. For example, box gun C8 SFW has manageable recoil if you practice with it a lot. Compensator reduces recoil diamond by 17.75%, so if you want to do long bursts, use compensator because it reduces recoil. And the last one is flash hider. Flash hider is a mix between compensator and muzzle brake. It reduces centering time and first shot recoil like muzzle brake does, and it reduces diamond size like compensator. So if you want to benefit from both attachments, flash hider may be a good choice. Needless to say, flash hider is less effective than muzzle brake and compensator. Ok, let's talk about grips and laser sight. The numbers shown in this image may be incorrect, because these stats are from an old Rogue 9 video. But functions of both grips and laser stay the same. Vertical grip reduces recoil by 25% and angle grip reduces ADS time by 40%. To choose between these two grips, if you can manage recoil without vertical grip, definitely use angle grip. And laser reduces tip fire spread by 25%. I suggest if you want to make rotates like smoke and mute do, don't use laser and don't ADS. But if you want to use shotgun for a gunfight, use laser with ADS since bullets are closer to each other. For other guns, a common reason why most players don't use laser is that it will expose their position. I think that's wrong. Here's an example from Villa. There are 5 common spots where defenders can hold the same angle. Some are more common but it doesn't change the fact that there are 5 different spots where you can hold the same angle. Another reason is that if you are looking at somebody through bullet holes or punch holes, the laser shot into defenders eyes. In conclusion, I wouldn't use laser except some shotguns or LMGs. Here are some tips. If you can't control a gun's recoil using 2.5x size, use 1x size. Here are two clips of me doing a 360 with ACOG and hollow. It takes more mouse movement to do a 360 with ACOG. Now let's explain in-game stats about guns. Damage is obvious. It shows the damage each bullet can do to a body shot. Rate of fire is the frequency at which a specific weapon can fire or launch its projectiles. Fire is measured in RPM or rounds per minute. Capacity is the amount of ammo in each mag. If you want to compare guns, I suggest using Rogue 9's sheet and judge guns by TTK or time to kill. 
SDK or shas to kill and rate of fire. The good thing about this cheat is that it's color coded. So if you don't know if rate of fire is good enough or not, you can judge by the color. Green meaning good, red bad, orange in the middle. There are some videos out there saying this is the best attachment for this gun. Remember, there are no code-unquote best attachments for a gun. It's all preference. For example, on the map bank, if you want to rush side, use one excite instead of a cock. If you do long burst with SNG-11 in close quarters, use compensator and etc. Please don't change attachments too much except sights. Even then, if you can, use one sight. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave down in the comments.